Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here once again with another amazing video. At least I hope it is. Uh, well, I think it's Triumph. Uh, really, the only reason I'm doing this is because I kind of look at it as like a continuation of the Napoleon series that I did. Uh, which is a lot of episodes and a really awesome. So if you're new, you should definitely check out the Napoleon playlist I have. And this is basically, uh, uh, basically the next, uh, I actually, I really don't know. Honestly, I just know it's the same time with the kind of the end of Napoleon's reign, isn't it? I'm not quite sure. It's been a while since I've done that, uh, Napoleon videos. But I know, like I said, Wellington obviously was, you know, a big rival of Napoleon and a great general in his own right. So, uh, yeah, um, can you, this just got released from uh, Epic History TV, which, if you haven't checked out, is an amazing channel. I do a lot of their stuff. Uh, and to, just because I just released it, I kind of I, I want to see it because I've done Napoleon series. I like how they did that. And this is kind of like, part of that i guess but not part of it. I, I don't even know why i'm even thinking of what it is because i have no idea what wellington's triumph is like victoria i don't know what victoria is uh i know the year <laughs> 1813 uh but yeah uh i'm sure they're gonna refresh my memory here uh going into this uh, uh video so uh i'm sure you guys aren't as lost as me but I'm sure it's going to be enjoyable because, yeah, Wellington's cool. And I have, all I really know much about Wellington is what I've kind of seen uh, from the Napoleon series. And I've watched a couple seasons of the TV show Sharp from the 90s, which had Wellington in there. So, I, you know, I don't really know a whole lot about, I guess, his giant victories except for the waterloo one so anyways please hit that like and subscribe below guys bam and yeah we're gonna jump into this don't know really, really what to expect because uh, i forget you know where we were kind of left off in napoleon and everything so May 1813. While Napoleon's Grande Armée began its fight back in Central Europe following the disastrous invasion of Russia, 1,200 miles away, at the other end of Napoleon's embattled empire... A okay. So, all right. Makes sense now. Uh, this is during the Napoleonic period. Uh, of obviously you just said that so but this is obviously going to be a battle that's away from napoleon so this is something that wouldn't be would not have been highlighted during my napoleon series because you know we we're just following napoleon this is kind of out of the way so yeah be, this will be really interesting uh, to see here you know that it takes place in the same time period when we get to kind of you know learn more about like his wellington's genius you know and have the spotlight on him so this will be interesting Yeah, man, that video I watched, like, Napoleon going to Russia, this huge mistake, and then the retreating, this horrible, man. You, de you guys definitely need to watch that series. <laughs> 100 miles away, at the other end of Napoleon's embattled empire, another enemy was poised to strike. The previous year, Wellington's Anglo-Portuguese army had won a brilliant victory at Salamanca but been held at Burgos and forced into a long, demoralizing retreat back to the Portuguese frontier. But after a winter of rest, reinforcement and training, Wellington's army was stronger than ever. 100,000 men, many of them battle-hardened veterans. And for the first time, he had sufficient cavalry and artillery while transport and medical services had also been improved. Morale was sky high. Their chief, known to the troops as Old Nosy, was cheered wherever he went. I never saw the British Army so healthy or so strong, Wellington informed London. 
In contrast, the French position in Spain was weaker than ever. Napoleon severely underestimated the threat posed by Wellington, and had just withdrawn 20,000 French troops for his own use in Germany. Yeah, he didn't re basically uh, withdraw all his troops right because he didn't think there was no nothing to worry about. He withdrew the troops because he needed them badly, uh, you know, because he's lost a lot of men in Russia and he was kind of on the kind of like on the retreat, right? And he kind of need those troops, and uh, because Spain was had was given to pulling fits, man. You know, it was like guerrilla warfare and like. Like the French just made a mistake by going to Spain, basically. I mean, turn on Spain, and you know, the French kind of almost basically lost the war just from turning on Spain because a lot of their troops got bogged down in Spain. But yeah, that's not why they withdrew the troops, it's just because you know, he, he needed them more up in the north over there because you know, things are going kind of bad for him, but anyways and had just withdrawn 20,000 French troops for his own use in Germany. As commander-in-chief, King Joseph knew his forces were overstretched. Napoleon allowed him to give up Madrid and move his capital to the more easily defended Valladolid. But withdrawing further to a strong position like the Ebro River was out of the question. That would send the wrong message to neutral Austria and Napoleon's wavering German allies. And so, with serious concerns, Joseph and his chief of staff, Marshal Jourdan, awaited Wellington's offensive. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, the free-to-play RPG in which you build a team of champions of evil forces and turn click animations and sound expansions and a PvP arena for taking on other mobile now. Thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Uh, a few days we shall take the field. The campaign is fair is the most brilliant. I hope to see the goodness before September. Wellington's plan was for his army to advance in two wings, concentrate at Toro, then move against Joseph's forces. In the south, Murray's Anglo-Sicilian Spanish force, based in Alicante, had just repelled an attack by Marshal Suchet at the Battle of Castilla. Suchet. Murray would now mount a diversionary landing on the Mediterranean coast to coincide with Wellington's advance and prevent Suchet sending reinforcements north. Wellington had also counted on large-scale support from Spanish regular forces of which he was, since November 1812, theoretically commander-in-chief. But the Spanish Cortes, based in Cadiz, was deeply divided, with many still highly suspicious of British motives. The result was that Wellington would only receive direct support from a few reliable Spanish divisions. Hmm. Fortunately, he would receive considerable Spanish I can understand that because, you know, the British are like a powerful army and, you know, do have a lot of colonies, you know, around the world, right? So, you know, I'm sure people from Spain are like, are we really going to kind of like uh, trade one dicta dictator for another, you know? And as, you know, you, you put the French out, but then, you know, the Britain, you know, they, they, uh, they make themselves at home instead of having France there. And so I can definitely see why, you know, Spain would be hesitant to, you know, be on Wellington's side. Support. Fortunately, he would receive considerable Spanish support from the guerrillas, now better armed, organized, and operating in greater numbers than ever before. A large area of Valencia had effectively been liberated by El Fraile, the friar. Esposimina had captured major towns in Navarre and was currently keeping General Clozel's Army of the North busy, while Juan Martín Díaz, a.k.a. El Empecinado, was tying down large numbers of French troops near Madrid. Very smart at piles, just down. 
<laughs> On the 22nd of May, Wellington bid farewell to Portugal and began his advance. Four days later, he was in Salamanca, from where he joined the northern wing of his army under Sir Thomas Graham. Joseph and Jourdan expected Wellington's main thrust to come from Salamanca, so planned to defend the line of the Douro River. But Graham's rapid advance north of the river meant they'd already been outflanked, and they ordered a retreat. By a series of brilliant marches, Wellington continued threatening the French right flank, forcing Joseph to keep falling back. Wellington's army was able to use small roads and mountain tracks north of the main highway, which the French had dismissed as impassable. But thanks to his Spanish allies, Wellington knew better. Backed by British sea power, he was also now able to switch his supply base from Lisbon to Santander, drastically reducing the length of his supply lines, another feat the French had written off as impossible. At the Ebro River, the French found themselves outflanked yet again, and fell back to Vitoria. Wow, the French are already taking, like, the British lightly, like, you know, you know, things can change, guys, just because you kicked your, you know, kicking butt, you know, the previous year, I guess they thought, you know, they'd still be able to, you know, keep that going, but, uh, man, they're not learning right now, man, they keep making mistakes. <laughs> Uh, I guess, uh, and Napoleon's busy. He can't come down here and help him out down here. You know, he has, he has more important things to worry about. Here we go, guys. ...themselves outflanked yet again and fell back to Vittoria. Here, Joseph decided that he must make his stand. The Zadora River Valley west of Vittoria seemed to offer a strong defensive position. Expecting an attack from the west, French forces were drawn up in three lines. General Gazan's Army of the South formed the first line. Then General Derlon's Army of the Centre. Then General Rey's Army of Portugal. Joseph hoped that he could at least buy time for the vast wagon convoy assembled east of the city to get away. It contained not only military supplies, but his government's treasury. And, as satirised by this contemporary British cartoon, the accumulated loot of five years French occupation of Spain, including priceless works of art, jewels and antiques. Wow. He also expected General Clausel to arrive with 20,000 reinforcements any day. However, thanks to the guerrillas, Wellington was better informed of Clausel's whereabouts than Joseph himself. Knowing that Clausel couldn't reach Joseph before the 22nd of June, he decided to attack on the 21st. The day before, French patrols reported enemy troop movement to the north, so Reyes' troops were moved to cover any threat to the army's line of communications. Apart from one division, which left to escort part of the wagon convoy to France. An odd decision that deprived the army of 4,000 men on the eve of battle. Marshal Jourdan had been bedridden with fever that day. The next morning, he reconnoitred the army's position with King Joseph. They agreed that their position was overextended and should be shortened. But by the time their orders reached General Gazan, it was too late. He was already under attack. I was gonna, I was gonna say we we'll go back to the, uh, yeah, because there's like a big gap right here. I thought, man, these guys are so spread out. Yeah, you know, I feel like you know it been, you know, just 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 looks like you know it'd be a lot easier, you know, to kind of control the troops and to make orders. You know, if people are more together, but I guess that's what they were trying to do. But it was, it was too late. Once the firing uh, starts, you know, the worst the battle starts. Uh, yeah, it'd be catastrophic to, to, to retreat now, and it would look bad and on morale, and you know, it could be a rout. But he was already under attack. Hmm. 
Wellington, enjoying the advantage in numbers for once, had decided to attack in four columns across a ten-mile front, with General Graham's left-hand column threatening Joseph's line of retreat. Ten miles. It was a bold plan, with the potential to trap and destroy Joseph's army, but required careful coordination and precise timing. Just ten miles, that's huge, man. I just think about, like, you know, it's like seven miles to my work. And like, dang, that feels like a long ways away. This is like a 10 mile battle, like no cars. I mean, if you want to join like, you know, the other part of the battle, it's, it's not, it's, there's no quick way of just, you know, helping your comrades out. Well, that's, that's huge. But required careful coordination and precise timing. Fortunately, the French had not thought it necessary to destroy any of the bridges over the Zadora River, which was also fordable in several places. Huh. At 8 a.m., General Hill's column began its attack on the Allied right. Spanish and British troops advanced up the western heights of Puebla, driving off French skirmishers and forcing General Gazan to send reinforcements to secure his left flank. Hill's troops then seized the village of Subiana, but French cannon fire and counterattacks prevented any further advance. Convinced that Hill's attack was the main assault, and that troop movements to the north were probably a diversion, Jordan continued to send troops from the centre to reinforce the left. This was exactly what Wellington sorry, wanted, sorry, but at 11 a.m. he was Sorry guys, I heard a banging on my door, but it was just a washing machine. <laughs> Anyways, back to... Wow. ...waiting with growing impatience for his other columns to go into action. Lord Dalhousie's 7th Division, supposed to be leading the attack by the centre-left column, had got held up in the mountains. While further east, Graham's flanking move had got off to a cautious start. But seeing the size of the approaching force, General Ray decided to pull back his troops across the Zadora River. This smart. encouraged Graham to get things moving. Colonel Longa's Spanish division advanced on Durana, held by Spanish troops loyal to King Joseph, and a bitter struggle for the village ensued. British and Portuguese infantry advanced against Camara Mayor. They were soon engaged in bloody street fighting with the French. Yeah. This scene shows an attack by the 4th King's Own Regiment of Foot and the 47th Lancashire Regiment. Though they succeeded in driving the French out of the village, they could not cross its bridge over the Zadora, which was expertly covered by French guns. I switched That's from State awesome. Farm I love because the... of this site. They had me paying a hundred sixty-three dollars a month for. I love the, uh, yeah, I love the paintings, man. It, it definitely helps, you know, when you, with the visuals, man. More lifelike, you know. Around noon, a Spanish peasant informed Wellington that the bridge at Tres Puentes was completely unguarded. He immediately ordered Kemp's elite light infantry brigade to dash across it and secure a bridgehead. But there was still little sign of Dalhousie's 7th Division. General Picton, the notoriously short-tempered commander of the fighting 3rd Division, ran out of patience. Fed up with waiting for Dalhousie, he ordered his men to advance. They charged across the Mendoza Bridge and a nearby ford, driving back light French defences. General Gazan, with his left flank pinned down at Subiana, was now about to be outflanked on his right, and had no option but to pull back his troops. Wow. Wellington's army was now crossing the Zadora River in force. Heavy fighting continued to rage on the heights of Puebla, but here the French also had to give ground to maintain the cohesion of their new line. Yeah, it really shows that they should have took those bridges out. And because then, 
all, the whole forest is not going to be able to pass all at once, you know. Uh, you probably, you know, it would have took them time to fix it, and or, you know, any sprays ain't going to get fixed at the same time. And you could be shooting on them while they're trying to fix it. Uh, I guess they thought, you know, the, the, like they said they weren't expecting that many troops. So like they didn't think it would be that hard of a victory, that hard of a battle, you know. And but and it was too late by the time they seen the troops. So uh, I don't know. I guess they, they, they were maybe overconfident, you know. I don't know, but it definitely proves to be a big mistake. Scottish Highlanders and Connaught Rangers, supported by riflemen and Portuguese troops, now stormed the village of Arinyev, routing the defenders, who retreated southeast. And a gap began to emerge in the French centre, between Gazan's army of the south and Derlon's army of the centre. The Allied advance continued, with heavy pressure on both French flanks. Wellington's army appeared to be building unstoppable momentum, yeah. with Graham's column poised to cut off Joseph's escape. By 4pm, Wellington's army was formed up across the Zadora, ready to strike a decisive blow. But his infantry came under heavy fire from 76 French guns, blasting great holes in their ranks. Allied guns were brought forward to provide support. The biggest artillery duel of the Peninsular War began. More than 70 guns on each side. Wow. Allied skirmishers, exploiting the gap in the French centre near Gometcha, were able to work their way behind the French guns and shoot down their crews. Gazon found himself threatened on both flanks. But instead of trying to close up with Derlon to his north, on his own initiative he ordered a retreat that left Derlon's own left flank completely exposed. What? Around the same time, Longa's Spanish troops finally captured Durana and rumours swept the French army that their escape route had been cut. Derlon's army of the centre fought on bravely, withdrawing to another new defensive line just one mile west of Vitoria. French guns kept up a steady fire on the advancing Allied lines, but once more the position was outflanked. Around 5.30pm... Yeah, like you have to hold like your entire line. If one gives way, it, it, it makes the other part of your line have to fall back because someone's getting, someone's going to get flanked. If one part, you know, just, just having one part back away. So it, it's very kind of neat you know, to see how, you know, when one backs up, how the rest kind of have to like adapt and back up with them. It just, I think it's kind of really neat to see how to watch this, you know, kind of play out. King Joseph bowed to the inevitable and ordered a general retreat. Five million dollars were banned by the France and left upon the ground. Wow. As the main road to France had now been cut by Longa's Spanish troops, the army would have to retreat east towards Pamplona along a single narrow road with boggy fields on either side. Bad enough for thousands of troops and guns, but there had been no attempt to move off the army's enormous convoy of wagons earlier in the day. The result was pandemonium, as military units and artillery tried to force their way through the streets of Vitoria and the congested lanes and fields beyond. The task of forming a rearguard fell to General Reyes' Army of Portugal which conducted an organised withdrawal covered by its cavalry. Wellington hoped that Graham's column would now be surging across the Zadora River to cut off the French army's retreat. But Graham, overestimating the enemy's strength, continued to take a cautious approach. Huh. East of Vitoria, the French retreat descended into total chaos. The single narrow road became blocked, Wagons that took to the fields got stuck and were abandoned. Allied cavalry fell upon this confused mass, spreading panic and meeting little serious opposition. 
Mm. King Joseph and Marshal Jourdan themselves narrowly escaped capture. Among the abandoned wagons, many civilians, including officers, wives and children, priceless paintings, jewels and furniture, and more than five million gold francs. Troops on both sides broke ranks and dived into an orgy of plundering. One British officer described the scene. About dusk, the head of our column came suddenly on some wagons which had been abandoned by the enemy. Someone called out, they are money carts. No sooner were the words uttered than the division broke as if by word of command, and in an instant the covers disappeared from the wagons and nothing was seen but a mass of inverted legs, while the arms were groping for dollars. For money it certainly was. The scene was disgraceful, but at the same time, ludicrous. Wellington, however, was furious. Yeah. Not only did the plundering delay pursuit of the enemy, but giant sums of cash, which might have paid for his army's supplies, vanished into private pockets instead. Of 5.5 million francs, only 250,000 were ever recovered by the army. Victoria was... Oh, they were recovered by the army. They just didn't enclose it. They were, wow. Man, those soldiers are like, oh, man. <laughs> Oh, I'm surprised they didn't, I guess, search them or not. Like, you know, the commanders, I guess that wasn't a thing back then. Because if all these soldiers had all this money, like, stored away in their pockets or whatnot, you'd think they would search them for it. Maybe, I guess that's not a thing. Or maybe that would kind of ruin morale and everything. And they didn't want, because, you know, if a lot of them stole, so there'd been a lot of soldiers they'd have to probably hang or something like that. So they probably didn't want to have that. Yeah, happen so damn i mean at least if you're, if you're doing your job and all of a sudden you see like millions of dollars you know as you know, it's got to be pretty tempting to stop and grab you know it's life changing money so especially back then uh but wow yeah i can definitely know it. obviously wellington you know has a right to be mad i mean he had him on the run and this definitely would have slowed it down was a great victory for the Vittoria was a great victory for the coalition. Not as crushing as it might have been, reflected in relatively light French casualties. But in the chaotic retreat that followed, the Allies did capture all but two of 153 French guns, and even Jordan's Marshal's battle. French military power in Iberia was broken. The Bonapartists... Yeah, they got the Marshal's Baton. And from my Marshal series, and you know, as part of the Napoleonic series, we know how important those things are. So, wow. Uh, that's like a huge slap in the face to the French that the, uh, the English got it. French military power in Iberia was broken. The Bonapartist Kingdom of Spain was at an end. Joseph returned to France to face his brother's criticism. Marshal Jourdan retired from active service. Napoleon sent Marshal Soult to replace them, but even his shrewd military mind could not turn the tide in Spain. Counterattacks to relieve the French garrisons at Pamplona and San Sebastian were defeated. That autumn, Wellington began what proved an unstoppable advance across the Pyrenees and into France. In southern Spain, where Marshal Suchet remained undefeated, the disaster at Vitoria forced him also to withdraw towards the frontier, leaving behind just a few isolated garrisons. After a bitter five-year struggle, the Allies had brought the Peninsular War to the Spanish their War of Independence to a victorious conclusion. It had been a long, hard road, steeped in blood and suffering. The alliance between Britain and Spain had been particularly treacherous to navigate. 
but ultimately both nations had fought together with Portugal to drive the French back across the Pyrenees. New research provides a clearer insight than ever into the huge attrition of French manpower in Iberia. An estimated total of 260,000 lives lost. Three quarters died of sickness. Of approximately 66,000 deaths from combat, 43% were in actions against Spanish regular forces, 38% fighting British-led armies, and 19% fighting guerrillas. By contrast, British military deaths are estimated at 52,000, Portuguese 15,000, with many more thousands of civilian deaths, while Spanish deaths are unknown, though the country as a whole may have lost as many as half a million lives in five years of war and occupation. For Napoleon, this disaster had been an unnecessary and largely self-inflicted wound. An intervention born of arrogance and false assumptions, with dire strategic consequences. Yeah. But as the Napoleonic Empire crumbled in Spain, an even greater struggle neared its climax in Central Europe, where Napoleon faced the most powerful coalition of his enemies yet. Yeah. If the French Emperor was victorious in Germany, Wellington might soon be scrambling back across the Pyrenees. The fate of Europe was about to be decided at the Battle of Leipzig. I saw that. Thank you to History. Yeah, definitely check out the Battle of Leipzig. That was pretty awesome. I've, I've, already, I've done that video. You should definitely check out the Napoleonic playlist. Uh, but wow, uh, it would have been kind of cool to see, like, obviously we saw... Uh, you know, Napoleon at, at Waterloo, we, we saw Napoleon take on Wellington, but it would have been like even awesome, awesomer <laughs> if we saw uh, if Napoleon was part of that battle right here. You know, because I think you know it could have easily easily have gone a different way if Napoleon was there. Because Napoleon, you know, when he uh, was part of battles he basically won if he was in you know the leader of that battle he basically won those battles when it when it was left up to one of his you know his gen his marshals and they were by themselves it didn't really you know they didn't really do very good and so uh it would have been cool to see a one-on-one -on -one right there with wellington and the plan that would have been really exciting uh to see that uh but yeah, definitely very well done by uh, Wellington there. I mean, his men making great decisions and they were pushing together as one, basically. And uh, a little more con confusion, you know, and kind of like in the, I guess, the retreat of uh, Nap Napoleon, but the, the French there, they, uh, they kind of seemed a little out of sync there and that kind of, it was, a, it was a big factor of them kind of retreating and you know wellington get the best of them and but wellington they took he took advantage took advantage of the spots that he had to and uh yeah came out on top uh it was kind of, it was definitely cool to see that uh it basically is part of the you know it's part of the napoleonic war it's just that napoleon wasn't you know part of this battle so uh it definitely will be added to the playlist of my napoleon's napoleon series because i've kind of basically is kind of part of that you know it's that you know, you know what i'm saying so anyways guys but anyway guys hit that like and subscribe button below i hope you enjoyed this video and i don't know what i'm going to be doing tomorrow i guess i'll just kind of like you know figure i'll figure something out anyways but yeah like subscribe uh you guys are amazing i appreciate all the support and, and everything so uh yeah thank you for that and i hope you guys have an amazing night or, or great day whatever it is for you right now and uh Catch you guys in future videos. Peace.